Welcome to the Ray Hanania Radio Show, brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News, the leading English language newspaper in the Middle East at ArabNews.com. I am Ray Hanania, your host. It's Thursday, September 19, 2024. This season, the Ray Hanania Radio Show focuses on the U.S. presidential elections, the battle between the major party candidates, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, and the alternative candidates, including Dr. Jill Stein of the Green Party. How will Arab and Muslim Americans vote on November 5th in the presidential election and afterwards is what we are focused on. This week, I'll take the radio show on the road to Dearborn, Michigan, which has the largest concentration of Arab and Muslim voters and an Arab American mayor. I attended the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee ADC convention September 12th through the 15th that was held in Dearborn and found significant opposition to both Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Kamala Harris and overwhelming favoritism for third party candidate Dr. Jill Stein. We did find Arabs who support Trump and Arabs who support Harris, but who said she still has time to change and take a stronger position, challenging the policies of Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They want him to end they want the US and Kamala Harris to end funding Israel's government and push hard for a cease fire. The Democrats who are leaning toward Jill Stein said the door is still open for Harris if she will support their demands. But that door is closing fast. The Gaza conflict has seriously impacted American politics across the country. So first, we speak with Miriam Hassanin, an appointee of the Joe Biden administration, who explains why she resigned in protest over his policies in Gaza. Hassanin worked in the Department of Interior as a special assistant to the assistant secretary's office. Safa Rivka, the national chairman of ADC, explains why they moved the annual convention from Washington, D.C. to give Arab Americans a platform to address issues, including the presidential elections. Safa says that the convention will stay in Dearborn next year. Three Democratic legislators who participated in a panel and addressed a contentious audience of 800 people in a discussion about who the Arab community should support, Harris, Trump, or Stein. They include Michigan State Representative al Farhat, Georgia State Representative Rua Roman, and Illinois State Representative Abdul Nasser Rashid. Roman defends Harris, believing Harris must work through the system, and Farhat and Rashid believe the door is still open for Harris to take action on Israel's genocidal governmental policies in Gaza. We also spoke with several activists who attended the ADC convention on the issue of the presidential elections. First, Susan Abulhawa the author of the 2010 book, Mornings in Janine, and then North Carolina activist Rania Al-Masri, who disagrees with Roman and supports Stein. And we also talk with Minnesota Democrat and uncommitted delegate Kevin Aldwake, who is supporting Trump. There is still about seven weeks until the election, and who knows how politics and views may change. The show is broadcast live every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNZK AM 690 Radio and rebroadcast on Monday at 5 p.m. in Michigan. It's also available online at ArabNews.com slash Ray Radio Show. Get more information on me at ArabNews.com or at my personal website at HannahNia.com. We'll be right back right after these messages to begin our interviews. ArabNews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at ArabNews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com, news that matters to you. As the weather gets colder, it's a good idea to layer up with scarves, hats, and mittens. Another layer of protection this season is to get your flu and COVID-19 vaccines. You can get both vaccines at the same time. Talk to your health care provider or learn more at michigan.gov slash COVID flu RSV and layer up for some added peace of mind. 
A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Life for Relief and Development has now been rated as one of the best charities for humanitarian aid. Life's humanitarian projects span the globe, and Life is celebrating its 30th anniversary of providing essential life-saving aid to people and communities in 36 countries, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. Where there is life, there is hope. And when disaster occurs here or around the world, including being one of the first responders to the Turkey-Syria earthquake crisis, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. We are looking to help the earthquake victims and we take 0% overhead on emergency donations. So please help improve these efforts. Learn more about our involvement to help the helpless and bring hope where it's needed most and make your tax-deductible donation to Life for Relief and Development now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's 248-424-7493. Every Thursday in Michigan at 5 p.m., award-winning columnist and journalist Ray Hanania hosts the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network on WNZK AM 690 Radio and brought to you by Arab News Newspaper. This season's focus is on the U.S. presidential elections. Will it be Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or Dr. Jill Stein? Veteran political analysts and elected officials will join as guests. Join us every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNZK AM 690 Radio for the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network, a special on the presidential elections. Shows are rebroadcast each Monday at 5 p.m. Get to know more about the show at ArabNews.com. This interview is with Miriam Hassanin, who quit her Biden-appointed job in the Interior Department because of the Gaza violence. She spoke at the ADC convention and then spoke with me. Miriam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us about, first of all, tell us about your job. What was your position first? I mean, I want people to appreciate the significance of what you had before you made your decision. Yeah, so I was at the Department of the Interior. I was a special assistant uh, in in Assistant Secretary's office, uh, and mainly I was a political appointee, right? And I uh, that really means that I was there uh, at the Department of the Interior to advance the president's agenda. And and appointees are only there for for as long as that current president is is um, is in office. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, really kind of the nature of the role and, and, and what I what I had beforehand. And it's significant. I mean, to work in the White House with uh, the president's administration. I mean, was that something that you aspired to or trained to? I, I want the public to really appreciate the depth of what you sacrificed. Yeah. So I am. Um you know, I I started out my career in in the federal government. I was on Capitol Hill before, and I will say that yeah, definitely there is. I, I really did aspire to to have federal government um, experience because I I as I as I mentioned, I think that public policy is a, is a vehicle for progress, and I really had that um, belief, and I, I still maintain that belief, but in, in maybe sort of different ways. And I really had that belief going in, so um, I would say that you know it, it's something that I it, it was a privilege to, to have and, and to to be in that position but I recognize that it's it's much more than privilege it's much more than you know just myself I should be thinking about okay if if I'm in this position is it just because I'm in this like is it sort of just a privilege just to just to have it be a privilege or am I able to do something am I able to actually you know enact the changes that I want to want to see come to life and I felt that um, that wasn't possible in that position. So the Gaza war breaks out and we've seen many of them so many times and you'd been uh, working how many months years before this happened? Yeah, so so in the federal government as a whole, since the beginning, um, in the in the administration um, it, for this year, since the beginning of the year, yeah. Oh, so you've been at the start of the administration? No, sorry, the federal government as a whole. So Capitol Hill, I was I was on the Hill beforehand, and then had made the transition over. So in the administration for for 2024 up until I resigned, yeah. And how many months would you say? Um, so seven months. 
so you're there seven months. This happens. What comes to your attitude? What you're feeling when you see this? And then you and what made you think that there was going to be a problem? Yeah, I think that. So, uh, really, what I what I say is that for for a while, I think the sentiment among among many people in the within you know the the pro Palestine movement is that they're. Um, there wouldn't ha this offensive wouldn't have lasted as long as it as it has, um, and that there must be an end at some point. I think you know I, I remember being in D.C. and um, and when October seventh happened, a lot of people um, we had a we had a national march planned for November, and a lot of people felt, oh well, surely this will be over before November. Surely you know it can't go on that long, um, but we've seen that to not be the case, and and so um, that you know I think really quickly over the the beginning of the year I, I understood that to be the case I think especially when we when we look at the spring how they passed even far more funding for um, for Israel and for weapons to Israel despite you know numerous human rights violations numerous um, massacres so there, there came a point where it it didn't seem like it was unfortunately ending any anytime soon so then you just decide I'm going to quit. I'm going to resign. Yeah, I think that I think that there is importance of advocating from within, but I think that there's also importance in recognizing um, the kind of end point of that. Like there is only so far your voice can go, and and you know I I came from Interior where I had another colleague resign, and given like given that experience, I understood, and and you know I tried to to advocate within my within my own separate ways, but given that experience seeing that reaction of, of her resignation, I think, showed me that really, I, I don't think that there was farther my voice could go in that, in that agency. Now, I've covered uh, government for over 45 years, and when uh, President Biden came in, he made a point of saying he was going to reach out to our community. So you and maybe 20 others were hired, you were brought in. Did you feel from the beginning that you were going to have a role? I mean, were you energized in that way that I'm going to make a difference? Yeah, I think I think certainly. I think that it, it's something I cited when I when I um, was was being considered to join the administration. I cited that it's uh, I'm excited and, and want to be a part of this effort to include diverse communities, to include marginalized communities. Um, and you know, unfortunately, I think. Uh, yeah, diversity has just been used as sort of just that that's the end point it's like well we have all these diverse faces we have you know all of these these uh diverse uh religions and and, and whatnot but we're not doing anything with that with that diversity do you think everybody else that was there did you know the other arab americans that were working at the biden administration and did you get a sense of how they feel too i mean this had to be really troubling especially to push you to make such a monumental mental decision like that yeah I think that um so uh, it, it's it's a little difficult because the administration's kind of you know pushed right. pushed into different agencies so I didn't know everyone um but you know within like just the, the kind of immediate circle that I had yeah I, I knew I knew a few Arab appointees and it's it's really troubling it's troubling to you know go into go into work and um see people who look like you and, and maybe even fam like have your family be impacted by be impacted atrociously by um, by the policy that the administration you're working for is is pushing so the sentiment even though there hasn't been you know as many resignations the sentiment of, of concern and, and disappointment is is really well within but it showcases that there's there was a big problem what was the most important thing you wanted to tell everybody here at the conference about what happened to you and what you were doing what, what was your strongest message that you wanted to tell everybody that you hope when they leave here that they're going to bring with them and share yeah I think I think just speaking on the importance of, of sacrifice I think that uh, sacrifice isn't um, shouldn't be careless and it shouldn't just be sacrificed for the sake of it but I think we have to understand that 
there are certain things we have to give up and and of course I think try as as much as you can to to advocate within the spaces that you're in but if you if you find yourself at a stopping point um take a look at what you what you can sacrifice um and take a look at what you should be doing differently thank you so much this interview is with Safa Rifka, chairman of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, ADC, on why ADC moved the annual convention from Washington, D.C., where it's been held for the past 40 years or more, to Dearborn, Michigan. Safa, how are you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you very much. And we're here in uh, Dearborn. Is this the first time that ADC had a convention outside of Washington, D.C.? Um, yes. We usually have uh, two conventions, one on the East Coast and a minor one on the West Coast, uh, October 27. But this is, we shifted our convention from Washington, D.C. this year to Dearborn. And this is the big convention today? Yes, yes. The, the turnout is great. It means the need is there for an Arab-American summit to the community to explore what the community wants, what the community feels, and what are their aspirations, specifically in this year, which is we're selecting our leaders. So it's a significant move to come. You're making a statement that Dearborn is important to be there because that's where the big vote is, instead of Washington, D.C., where all the politicians who ignore us are at. Well, you're right, and we are making the statement to answer the Wall Street Journal accusation that Dearborn is the city of terrorists in America, yeah. is the city of fantastic citizens, proud American citizens here. So we came to it just to, as an answer, as to make a statement that this is the capital of Arab America and we are here to make a statement for that. And Dearborn cares about the Arab community a little more than Washington, D.C. sometimes, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> and so you've had a lot of great speakers. I mean, let's talk about the ones that we've seen. Can you talk about a few of them that we've seen this uh, over the last couple of days? I know we have the dinner tonight, but I'll save that for later. But up, up until now, even now, even legislators you have coming in to talk, right? Yes, yes. Today is uh, going to be a great day where we're going to have city or... or uh, councils and legislators on the state level right. uh, of Arab American descent to come and talk to us. Uh, of course, Thursday, Jill Stein was the here, and uh, yesterday on Friday we had all the bloggers. Right. We had the. It was mainly tailored for the youth. Yes. We want the youth to come forward and to express and to participate because it's the youth that gave the the media a spanking. Yes. And they and they unravel the truth, and they are out there looking for it, and they are the activists, and they are our hope for the future. Now I know ADC is not a political organization, but in a sense, you're empowering the community to do everything stronger and more effectively. Correct? Yes. I mean, ADC is a secular, it's nonpartisan, and we do uh, grassroots organization, but it's our job to spread awareness and to encourage participation, civic participation. You know, we are telling Arab Americans, come and have a seat at the table. And we are working towards that. And you've got a great response though this weekend. I gotta tell you, there's so much. What is the message you want people to leave here with at the end of this weekend? What do you hope that they'll go to their homes, whether it's in Dearborn or Washington or Chicago or wherever? What do you want them to take with them and move forward? I want them to, to feel that they are proud Arab American citizens in this great land. We want them, we want to empower them to participate in the civic duties. Go and vote. Select your representative. Don't be bashful. Look towards people who are going to serve you and elect them. This is the time to practice our democracy. All right, my guest, Safa Rifka, the chairman of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, holding its annual big convention in Dearborn, which I think everybody in America, the Arab American community, believes is the capital of the Arab American community. Safa, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ray. You're the best. All right. Thank you. This interview is with Susan Abuhawa, author of the book, 
mornings in Janine on why she believes Arab Americans should support Dr. Jill Stein. She made those comments at the ADC convention in Dearborn. Suzanne, you first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've written several books. Tell us about those books. Uh, well, I mean, you reviewed one of them, uh, Morning. Yes, I did. <laughs> it was beautiful. But ago. tell us for the audience. I mean, they're novels. They're 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 all multi generational novels. I have uh, some anthology books, some a poetry book. Yeah. And how is Morning Janine doing? Um, well, it's translated into 30-some languages. Um, it has uh, sold over a million copies worldwide. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's considered a classic now, the book that you reviewed many years ago. I can't wait till it's a movie. I'm waiting for that. Yeah, inshallah. So you just got through on a powerful panel with amazing women, yourself and Hueda and so many others, talking about the election and the way that we're misleaded. Tell us about that because this election coming up is so important to really understand and I thought your message came across powerfully. Well, I am uh, I'm, I'm voting for uh, Jill Stein. I think it's really important that uh, people vote for third parties to empower third parties because we are, I mean, this, this duopoly are, we're enslaved to it at this point, and there's really no difference uh, between them when it comes to the things that matter to us. Um, nothing is fundamentally going to change uh, um, with either party, and if people are only interested in domestic issues, nothing is going to change domestically. We still have this ruling elite who manage our lives. Uh, in every respect, whether it's healthcare, it's food access, um, water, uh, 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 water access, um, everything that concerns our lives, education, jobs, um, is basically ruled by this wealthy elite who control both parties. And one of the points that I made is uh, is regarding, you know, uh, the difference between Trump and and Kamala, and, and I, I made the point, referencing the. Uh, the debate where Kamala Harris, you know, told this bold-faced lie that has been debunked uh, repeatedly and definitively that uh, that there was mass rape on October 7th. It didn't happen. It was a big lie. It was it was a lie like the the 40 beheaded babies, like all the other lies that Israel has been telling, like the command and control centers under hospitals. All of these lies, um, that was one of them. And Kamala Harris has repeated it in public, and she repeated it on the stage in that debate. And Donald Trump didn't challenge her. He knows it's a lie too, but he didn't and he could have and he could have scored big time points, but he didn't because ultimately they both serve the same masters. And I made that point um, because I think it's really important for Arab Americans to understand that we have no place and no future with these people. And at this hour, when our people are being slaughtered before our eyes, when we are watching day in and day out brains spilling from the brains of our babies, from you know dis rampant disease, where Israel has set up torture camps, rape torture camps for 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 kidnapped Palestinians, uh, for us to go and vote for the people who are funding this and who are behind it 100% is a betrayal of monumental proportions. It is unspeakable that any self-respecting Arab should vote for the Democrats at this hour. And, and it's kind of a hard argument to make because I keep running into the point that you brought up. I'd say, well, you know, I'm going to vote for Jill Stein because even though I don't know whether she's going to win or not, she could win if a lot of Democrats would wake up and support her. And they say, well, you're going to elect... Donald Trump and I would say well I'm not going to elect Donald Trump no. you're going to elect Donald Trump uh, how, what do you say to that you gave, you were just talking about that argument so well explain it that to the people maybe better than I can well, there's multiple aspects to this. First of all, there's the fear mongering, right? The, uh, Trump is this horrific boogeyman and Trump, 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 right? They put you in this state of panic. They put you in this state of fear. And this happens every election, every single election. They, they put people in this state of panic. And if you, don't, if you don't pull the red lever or the blue lever, doom is going to happen. And that's not the case. It's a lie. It is con we are conditioned to believe this. So and it's, it's a manipulative tactic. And, and what I was telling people is that this is the time 
for people to stand on principle. That is the only way we can empower this movement. That is the only way we can shake these the chains of this two-party uh, enslavement, basically. That's the, is, is if we stand on principle. Because if we don't do that at this hour when there is a live stream genocide of our people, if we cannot do that, if we squander this moment, we are signaling that we have no, no power, that we are easily manipulated, that we are nothing, we will never be anything and they can do whatever they want to us and we will fall in line because all they have to do is put us in that state of panic and, and, a, thir and a third party can change absolutely. A, thir a third party can change the system and they have to believe i think it was you that said you have to have you have to vote for hope exactly i mean every election people are voting out of fear and and what I'm asking people is to, for once, vote out of hope. Vote for the people who reflect your values. Vote for the candidates who are telling you that this is what they're going to do and it's aligned with everything we believe in. Jill Stein is, is handing us a platform on a silver platter. We just have to reach for it. And the only impediment is this brainwashing that we have allowed these two parties to, 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 to wash our brains with, you know? <laughs> it's that we have allowed them to manipulate us so profoundly um, that people are just crippled. People don't recognize their own power. Um, and so, so that's the message I'm trying to, uh, I, that I want people to, to see. I want people to imagine a better world and how accessible and how actually close it can be. And even if Dr. Stein does not win, and then like the idea that she doesn't have a chance is not true. It is actually, they, they could get enough electoral votes. They actually can. But even if she doesn't in this election, if enough people, at least 5%, that's all we need to vote for her, that will mean that a third party will automatically be on the ballot in the next election. It will mean federal funding that is automatically released to this third party. Uh, and and this, is build, this is movement building. This is what we right. need to do. Because if we don't, if we can't even muster that, honestly, then, then there is no hope. Because this election, unlike any other time, is, is, will determine world order and, and this is not an exaggeration because it's going to determine what happens in Gaza and if the Democrats get into office Israel will have no reins it will have no uh, no checks it will have unfettered access to bomb Lebanon to bomb Syria to bomb Iran and this will escalate and it will snowball it is not going to stop we just saw it's it's moved from Gaza now to the West Bank and to Lebanon this aggression and this is you know and they t they're telling us they're literally telling us what they want to do they have been telling us for 20 years that they want to erase Gaza you just have to listen to what they say publicly. They have been telling us they're going to do this for 20 years. They have been lamenting the demographic threat. They have been lamenting our birth rate because they feel like it's a direct threat to them. And so they're telling us now, what they're telling us is that they are going to expand this to, 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 to create a greater Israel. Listen to them. I think the most important point is that it's a third party and it doesn't happen overnight, and it's a process. It's a process, but it could also be a spectacular moment. It doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out process. Right. It can be a spectacular moment of, of victory, and and that is possible. All right, my guest is Anna Abohawa, author, you. Mornings in Janine. And uh, it was so nice for you to come and talk to us. We really appreciate Thank it. We you, wish Ray. you the Thanks, best. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. We'll be right back right after these messages. ArabNews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at ArabNews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com, news that matters to you. Hey, Michigan drivers, are you sending or answering group chats behind the wheel? 
checking emails at the light, calling family or friends on the commute, Michigan's hands-free law makes it illegal to manually use electronic devices while behind the wheel of a vehicle. Breaking the law could mean fines or even community service. Go hands-free, just drive. It's the law. Learn more at michigan.gov slash distracted driving. A message from the Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning. At Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical physical therapy, get the highest quality health care at Top Rehab. Most insurance is accepted and we're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday 8 to 6, Tuesday and Thursday 8 to 5, and Saturday 10 till 2. Call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555. That's 313-846-0555. Choose Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic on Michigan Avenue in Dearborn. Life's too short to be in pain. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Abood at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Abood now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design. New location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Naji Abood, 734-744-9796. Five-year-old Lila and her mom are on their way home from Grandma's, singing Lila's favorite song. A few blocks away, 25-year-old Dylan is visiting friends at a small party. He finishes off his last beer, gets in his truck, and starts for home. Mom and Lila turn onto Maple Street. So does Dylan. Every 50 minutes in the United States, someone dies in a crash involving a driver impaired by alcohol or drugs. If you're impaired and you know it, don't drive. Drive sober. A message from the Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning. This interview is with activist Rania Al-Masri of North Carolina on why Arabs and Muslims should support Dr. Jill Stein. So tell me your title and what you do. My name is Rania Masri. I'm a longtime anti-war pro-justice activist. I come from the swing state of North Carolina. And what Representative Ru'a just said is absolutely false. The community is mad at her because she claims that we don't have a choice. But she is the one who is pushing attacks against the choice that we have. So she's the one who's been spreading lies against Jill Stein. She's the one who's denying us the choice. So no, we are mad at her because she also, also is begging for crumbs from the Democrats. We never beg. And, and I know that uh, Jill Stein has been very open about supporting us, backing our community, standing up for all the issues that we have. And I agree with you that the issue isn't can she win or not. The issue is, are we being taken for granted? Is that the issue for you, that we as a community are being taken for granted for by a uh, political party that we've supported for so many years? Representatives like Representative Ro'a from, from Georgia encourage our community to be taken for granted. I, I reject that. I reject that our community be taken for granted. And for me, if we say genocide is a red line, then we vote that way. It really, really is that simple. And I'm exhausted of people doing mental gymnastics to try to forgive themselves for voting for Kamala Harris. I agree with you. The rest of the legislators seemed a little uneasy about answering that question, too. Yes. Do you expect them to support 
Jill Stein, or do you think that they're trying to avoid the issue? I don't expect much from Democrats, let me be very clear. I do not accept much from any person of conscience who is still tied to a pro-war genocidal party, nor do I expect much from politicians such as the ones that we just saw on this panel who claim that Kamala Harris's policies have changed and yet fail to name a single policy. Kamala Harris's policies are pro-war, pro-military, anti-immigration, pro-police brutality, pro-incarceration, and let us not forget, pro-genocide. So what policies of Kamala Harris have changed over the past few months? This is someone who is proud to get Dick Cheney's endorsement. You and I remember Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney is the architect that destroyed Iraq. And this woman claims to be a Democrat and is happy to be endorsed by 200 Republicans. So anyone who is still expecting the Democratic Party to grow a spine is unfortunately being extraordinarily naive, extraordinarily naive. The amount of sunlight today between the Republicans and the Democrats is very small. I encourage people, we need to divorce ourselves from the Democratic Party. We need to build and strengthen the Green Party and we need above all to remain dignified and proud and make sure Palestine is our North Star. And Rania Musri, North Carolina activist. Thank you so much, Rania. You're very welcome. This interview with Georgia Democrat and State Representative Rua Rahman is on her support of Kamala Harris and why Arabs and Muslims should keep the door open to Harris uh, in supporting uh, rights, a uh, ceasefire, and an end to the Israeli carnage in Gaza. My name is Ray Hanania with the Arab News newspaper. Yeah, thanks. I, mean, I was hoping yeah. you could just explain your position a little yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah. What was your reaction to the outburst that, yeah. and from, a, from this group? I mean, look, oh. it was incredibly, like, it's it's exactly what we've been talking about for literally 11 months now, right? The community is angry. The community feels disenfranchised. The community feels like they're not heard right now. And this is the inevitable consequence of that, right? The reality about our positions as state representatives is that Yes, I represent a district in, in Georgia that's about 60,000 constituents, but because of my identity, because of who I am, I also represent a much bigger constituency. And for a lot of those people, we like this opportunity is one of the only times they feel like they can vent that frustration and voice that frustration to like somebody quote unquote at the table on the inside, you name it. And so like the real but the reality of the situation is that like this is the inevitable consequence of not listening to people. Right? That's it. And like the the reality of the situation. Yeah. So for me personally. They're high, they're high emotions here, obviously. Right. I, exactly. But why is that? Right? Like people have been watching a genocide unfold on their phones for 11, almost 11 months, 11, like what, what day is it? Middle of September, right? In three weeks, it's going to be a whole year. Anyone who does not um, feel angry about that, anybody who is uh, not emotional about that, frankly, has lost a part of their humanity. And so what we saw in there is exactly what we've seen in our, you know, back in Georgia, back in Colorado, back in Illinois, back in wherever the case may be. Our jobs, though, as state representatives is to make sure the people we have access to know about it, hear that voice, and that we keep pushing them as much as possible to listen to those communities. Do you think the smart strategy is to leave the door open until the last minute before we do anything? I mean, that's my, again, that's my personal opinion. There are other people who don't believe that, and I respect that, and I understand that. Um, I, and I also come from a different context, right? Like, some state reps come from safe blue states. Some people come from deep red states. Some people come, like me, from a swing state where we have just different dynamics in each one, right? So that's what makes moving forward even harder, too, is that whether it's polling, whether it's even in that room, you heard people disagreeing with each other. It's hard to be able to find consensus when, when consensus in the, if, if consensus in the community doesn't exist, it's of course also not going to exist in leadership because we represent the community. We come from the community, so we have the same thought processes. We're grappling with it the same way. Again, my biggest concern, truly and sincerely, people can disagree with it. People can be upset about it. There is a growing what's called like nihilism and cynicism, right? This idea that nothing matters, nothing will change. There's no point in trying that is making us surrender before we've even tried. At, an, at a moment, by the way, when not just the Democratic Party, but the country is changing on this issue. There is nothing better for our opposition than for us to give up. 
And my goal is to make sure nobody gives up. That's what I care about. We can disagree on strategy, that's fine. We can disagree on tactics, that's fine. But the thing that I care most about is that we do not let this moment make us give up and allow our opposition to run completely unopposed everywhere they want to go and take over everything they want to take over. Thank you so yeah. much. This interview is with Illinois Democrat and State Representative Abdel Nasser Rashid on why Arabs and Muslims should keep the door open to supporting Harris. Uh, Abdel Nasser, thank you so much for talking to us at Arab Radio. Thank you so, thank you so much, Ray, for having me. So we just got a very contentious meeting. You were kind of on, on the side trying to offer advice and everything to everybody, but there seemed to be a real heated battle, but it looked like at this convention, the community seemed pretty divided um, in terms of whether they were going to support Harris or not. What did you make of this argument that, you, that we all saw? Well, people are seeing the pictures and the news coming out of Gaza every single day on social media and in the news. And when 40,000 people have been killed and 16,000 children, and those are older numbers now, unfortunately, and shamefully, they're higher now. Um, People are devastated. People are hurting. Um, I'm hurting. And we saw some of that come out today um, because we have the Biden-Harris administration that has continued to send um, bombs to the Israeli government. And we're asking for our leadership in the Democratic Party to follow, to do what's right. To do what's right, to do what the American people have said they want you to do, and we're not seeing that action yet, and so people are frustrated, people are angry, and I, I hope that Democratic leadership um, sees the need to engage in good faith, so that we can move forward with better policy, with an arms embargo to stop. The, the genocide to get a ceasefire um, and be able to um, build toward a future that we all want to see. So the door is still open in terms of deciding what to do, do you think, to wait and see if there can be a change? <laughs> well, pr you know, Vice President Harris has been the nominee for a little over a month now. Um, there is more, you know, there are more than 60 days left until the election. And um, did I get that wrong? What's the number of how many no, no, days that, are? That's all right. I could. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll say we're getting close to the election. I'll cut that out. Um, uh, Vice President Harris has been the nominee for for a bit over a month. Um, we still have, you know, six weeks roughly until the election, um, and so of course uh, there is not just a, a door that's open, but a need. There is a need um, to change policy to protect lives and to earn the support of so many people who care deeply about this issue. And what do you say to uh, voters out there? Um, should they wait? Should they uh, be active? I mean, what do you tell them to do at this point? We are six weeks before the election, and you and I have been in politics forever. We know things can change at any moment. What do you tell them? You know, each person, each person has a role to play. Um, call your member of Congress. Call your state legislator. Um, Take the surveys and the polls when they call you because those are really important for them to see where people stand. Um, show up at a protest. Support the student encampments. Do your part. Each of us is going to have a different role to play, but um, there is a genocide that's happening. And when, when we see this unfolding with support from the United States government, we have, we have an obligation to, to, to think about where it is that we can have an impact. Um, absolutely, people need to vote. People need to vote on in November, um, and people need to in, engage with their elected officials to let them know where they stand, even if they're feeling like they're not getting a response that they want. That engagement is incredibly important. Abdul Nasser Rashid from the state of Illinois, thank you so much. Thank you, Ray. This interview is with Michigan Democrat and State Representative Alabas Farhat on why Arabs and Muslims should keep the door open to Harris uh, and supporting a ceasefire and an end to the Israeli carnage in Gaza. Uh, you come from here. How do you feel about uh, the Dearborn's um, feelings with the Biden administration? You know, my constituencies made it clear time and again they're looking for a presidential candidate for a nominee to call for a ceasefire, to end offensive war uh, weapons going to Israel, and to recognize the humanity of the suffering of the Palestinians. Uh, right now, uh, the Biden administration candidly has failed to deliver a ceasefire. Uh, they have not rushed in humanitarian aid in the way we've seen, uh, or the way that this crisis requires it. It is a genocide happening right now. 
right? And so for my constituency, even for myself, we are demanding more because every day that we uh, don't have a ceasefire is a day that Palestinians are continuing to be killed, uh, that innocents are lost. The majority of these are children here. It's really important to emphasize that these are children we're talking about that are being massacred. You know, I watch videos when I open up my social media of fathers or mothers digging through rubble to find their children barely breathing, barely conscious. In some cases, they're dead. That's a reality that's been going on for almost a year now. We need this administration and any nominee seeking the vote right, of this crucial swing state to recognize that and to make actionable steps towards resolving the, the, the genocide in the region. Is Dearborn supporting Harris? Is Michigan supporting Harris? Well, I'll reference you back to was in February uh, of this year uh, in the presidential primary, organizers called for an uncommitted vote. 58% of Dearborn residents voted uncommitted, over 100,000 statewide. And the uncommitted movement wasn't just targeted only at President Biden, it was targeted at the policies that voters in Michigan want to see. They want a nominee of the party, they want a party platform that is calling for a ceasefire, that's calling for humanitarian aid to be rushed back in, and that recognizes the suffering of the Palestinian people and works towards justice in the region. That's what they're looking for. What's the state of the uncommitted movement right now? You know, I, I'll leave that for their leadership to talk about. Uh, for me, myself, as a representative of Dearborn, I'll tell you, many folks, uh, they're going to city council meetings, they're showing up, they're calling us with their stories of suffering that they're experiencing. Many in Dearborn can cite someone they know or them themselves who've lost over 80 members of their family. That's the reality for people living here and in our state, right? And it's the reality for many people who want to see hostages brought back home. A ceasefire accomplishes both of these goals. We in Dearborn here are also sympathetic. We want to see hostages brought back home. But when we're telling them how to do it, a ceasefire gets it done. And so we're pleading with the administration, we're demanding the administration to recognize this moment and, and, and actually do the right thing. Representative Farhan, Ray Hannity from Arab News. Would you talk to us about what you see in the Arab community in terms of how they're going to vote in the national election? I mean, yeah. there seems to be an anger here, but does that reflect the entire Arab community, do you think? You know, I think the Arab community uh, right now has said very loudly, very clearly, they want a nominee for a ceasefire. Uh, I think if you heard in that room just earlier today, uh, this is a good cross-section of Arab Americans nationally, there is a real frustration here. Uh, and so as far as what happens on November 5th, we're, thankfully today's not November 5th, we still have a few days, we have a couple more days to go, but if there is no action taken, if there is nothing done in way of a ceasefire, if there's nothing done uh, towards resolving the genocide, you know, I, I think Arab Americans will definitely go out and vote. They'll be voting their conscience, uh, but I think uh, they won't be voting uh, for the top of the ticket candidates. Do you think the rest of the Democrats around the country are like you when they look at this issue? Some of them seem a little shocked to be confronted by this here. You know, I, I think, I can't speak for every Democrat everywhere, uh, but I can say this. I can say that, you know, for me and my, my colleagues that I've worked with, you know, when we called for a ceasefire, we had more, you know, we had dozens of representatives and elected officials signing on to that letter. Uh, I think the Democratic Party, though, is missing an opportunity here by calling and recon first recognizing humanitarian suffering, rushing aid in, calling out the war crimes you're seeing take place, calling out the genocide, and putting a stop to it. They can do that right here and right now, and that's what we're looking for. So the final question is, is the door still open? It isn't shut then. I think, I, I like to believe it's never too late to do the right thing, but it's getting awfully late. It's getting awfully late in the game. Thank you very much. This interview is with Minnesota uncommitted delegate Kevin Aldwake on why he is not supporting either Dr. Jill Stein or Kamala Harris, and instead is supporting Republican Donald Trump. I'm Kevin Aldwalk. I'm an uncommitted delegate from Minnesota. Um, I couldn't make it to the DNC, but I made it as far as uh, state state convention. Uh, my issue with our panel that just presented, I, I understand the tricky situation of being trying to navigate politics and being within the DFL. They're endorsed as DFLers, but we made the uncommitted. Uh, committed movement to address one thing and one thing only solving the genocide weapons embargo and ceasefire even from our elected officials a lot a lot of a lot of our elected I feel like watered this down for their own polit political interest uh, we got insulted twice I feel 
One in the DNC when they refused to hear the uncommitted uh, delegation, although they heard everybody. We heard from Israelis, we, we heard from, uh, but not from Palestinians. That's an insult. What did you make of the panel, the four legislators? Well, you know, I mean, they're from across the country, Colorado, yes. uh, Michigan, so, Illinois. So I'm from a blue state. I've been a Democrat for 25 years. Which state? Minnesota. Uh, I'm uncommitted. And at this point, since my party, and they, they even agreed to this, the party been back, back, going backward with policy when it comes on Palestine. Um, I'm, I'm giving my vote to the second party. I'm not going to play the dance with, oh, we got a third option, which is Green. Green, ben, they're, not even, they're not even on the stage till six months ago. So do you think we should keep the door open to the Democrats should, I, I, and, and I, Kamala Harris? I think priority number one, because Kamala Harris gave you, gave you a statement already with endorsing with her VP pick. Uh, uh, Governor Tim, uh, Tim Walls never been a pro-Palestinian. We've been uh, chasing him for a ceasefire or a statement out of his office for the past 11 months. Totally ignored us. He canceled several meetings uh, with community members, including people uh, people that are trying to represent their family suffering in Gaza. He canceled on them last minute. Never spoke on the issue. Every time you press him for the Palestinian issue, he'll, he'll weasel around. So, so our priority number one right now, as Democrats, as uncommitted, as pro-Palestinian or Palestinian, is to punish the Democratic Party, which is 80, it seems like 85% of our pro-Israel. And the only way you could punish them is by making them lose. And the only way they lose is if we vote for the second party, which is, I know it's not a better alternative, but they, these guys need to lose. No? Tell me what the second party is. The uh, second party is Republican. I'm voting for Donald Trump. They made me do it. It's on them. And if they want to go back to their values after 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 they lose, we'll talk then. But tell them I don't want them in command of this country. So I've been talking to a group called Arab Americans for Trump. Are you part of the group now? Or are you, you're independent, I'm but you're independent, just... independent, but I would love to be part of that group at this point. <laughs> Thank you so much. Tell me your name one more time. Kevin Aldwalk. All right. And spell your last name. It's A-L-D-W-A-I-K. All right. Thank you so much, Kevin. We'll be right back right after these messages. Arabnews.com, bringing you breaking news from across the Middle East and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the latest headlines with expert analysis and insights at Arabnews.com. Join over 5 million Facebook fans and over 10 million monthly readers. ArabNews.com, news that matters to you. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bonham serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CD guidelines and is open every day 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. With more than 30,000 successful in vitro fertilizations, IVF Michigan is now ranked as one of America's best fertility clinics according to Newsweek magazine. IVF Michigan fertility centers are the recognized leaders in high quality fertility care. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and nine other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. A founding member, American Board Certified Dr. Nicholas Shama, is one of the leading reproductive endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. He has performed over 20,000 successful IVF cases and it's helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. When it's time to get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at one of America's best fertility clinics, call IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio toll free at 855-952-9600. 855-952-9600. Hey Michigan, let's think beyond the sink and learn where the water your family drinks every day comes from. Private wells and public water supplies allow homes across Michigan to draw water from different sources, like lakes, rivers, and groundwater. 
Tap into the facts about your home's water source and learn about your home's water quality to protect your family's health. Visit michigan.gov slash care for MI drinking water. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Ziad brand, quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. Thank you for listening to the Ray Hanania Radio Show brought to you by the U.S. Arab Radio Network and sponsored by Arab News, the leading English language newspaper in the Middle East at ArabNews.com. This season, the Ray Hanania Radio Show is going to focus on the U.S. presidential elections, the battle between the major party candidates, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, and the alternative candidates, including Dr. Jill Stein of the Green Party. How will Arab and Muslim Americans vote? And what's going to happen on November 5th? And what will the ramifications be of that election? That's what we're going to be looking for this season. This week, I took the radio show on the road to Dearborn, Michigan, which has the largest concentration of Arab and Muslim voters and an Arab American mayor. I attended the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Convention uh, September 12th through the 15th that was held in Dearborn and found significant opposition to both Trump and Harris and overwhelming support for Dr. Jill Stein. We did find some Arabs who support Trump and some Arabs who said they want to support Harris, but she still has time to change and take a stronger position, challenging the policies of Israel's extremist prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. They want the U.S. to end funding to Israel's government, and they're pushing hard for a ceasefire. These Democrat state reps from three different states said the door is open for them to support Harris, but she needs to change. The door is closing fast. And uh, among some of the speakers that we spoke with, we talked with Miriam Hassanin, an appointee of the Joe Biden administration, who explains why she resigned in protest of his policies in Gaza. We talked to ADC National Chairman Safa Rifka, who explained the importance of moving the convention from Washington, D.C., away from the Capitol to the real capital in Dearborn for the Arab American community. Then we talked with uh, several state representatives, including uh, Alabas Farhat of Michigan, State Representative Rua Roman of Georgia, and Abdel Nasser Rashid of the state of Illinois. They all said the door was open. They're all Democrats, and they believe that Harris can come through if she does the right thing. And of course, we spoke with several activists who attended the ADC convention, which drew more than a thousand people. It was amazing uh, to attend and meet so many people. First, we talked with Susan Abuhawa, who is the author of the 2010 book, Mornings in Janine. Um, and then we spoke with Rania Al-Masri from North Carolina, who disagrees with State Representative Roman and the other legislators about uh, supporting Harris and keeping the door open. She supports uh, Dr. Jill Stein. And we finally, we spoke with Minnesota Democrat and uncommitted delegate Kevin Aldwake, who is supporting Trump. There are still seven weeks until the election. Who knows? Stay tuned to the show. is broadcast every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNZK AM 690 Radio, and it's rebroadcast on Monday at 5 p.m. in Michigan. It's also available online at arabnews.com slash Show. Get more information on me, my writing, and my background by visiting arabnews.com or my personal website at hannahnia.com. I hope you have a great week. Thank you for listening to the radio show. Bye-bye. Every Thursday in Michigan at 5 p.m., award-winning columnist and journalist Ray Hanania hosts the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network on WNZK AM 690 Radio and brought to you by Arab News Newspaper. This season's focus is on the U.S. presidential elections. Will it be Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or Dr. Jill Stein? 
veteran political analysts, and elected officials will join as guests. Join us every Thursday at 5 p.m. on WNZK AM 690 Radio for the Ray Hanania Radio Show, presented by the U.S. Arab Radio Network, a special on the presidential elections. Shows are rebroadcast each Monday at 5 p.m. Get to know more about the show at ArabNews.com.